Today I'm going to do a little trip down memory lane. I often get asked which of my recorders is my favourite and in all honesty I want to say all of them but there are a couple of recorders that have stayed my constant companions over the years and I'm also going to tell you about the ones that got away instruments that I've encountered that aren't mine but they've always stayed with me. The first of my favourites in no particular order is my 415 Alto, um, I think it's in Rosewood, made by Joachim Roma. <laughs> Story time, I got this instrument when I was 18 or 19, I just started studying at Birmingham Conservatoire. I think it was my first like proper proper recorder. I remember then I paid £800 for it and I know the prices of handmade recorders have tripled since then as they should because this is an expensive world and an incredible skill. This instrument is a denner and I love the high register and it has a really big wide windway so I can put a lot of sound into it. There is such a richness of tone, there is so much detail in the sound, um, it's never, I've never got bored of it over 20 years. Now the one that got away, number one. This would have been 2005 and I went to the early music shop in Bradford, England to buy a Descamp recorder. In the end I came away with a Grenadilla Yamaha but not before I'd found something else. I found this soprano recorder and it was beautiful. It had the most gorgeous sound, pure singing, rich, light, agile, I was in love. But there was something weird about it and I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but I didn't care. That was the recorder for me. I went to ask about it and <laughs> the thing I couldn't quite put my finger on was that it wasn't a soprano recorder in C. It was a sixth flute. <sighs> a sixth flute is a recorder in D and this was at 4.15, so for all intents and purposes, the entire recorder was a semitone higher than I needed it to be. For a brief moment, I thought, I love it so much, I love it so much, but then I found out it was double my budget. <sighs> I don't even remember who made it. I will never in my life find that sixth flute again, but it was so beautiful. <laughs> Next up in my favourite recorders, I think this is honestly the recorder that I use the most and in the most variety of situations. It is my Stefan Bletzinger Ganassi Soprano. I actually have two bodies for this. 440 and 415, where's the 415? Uh, okay, it's packed somewhere. This recorder is just phenomenal. I love it so much. Um, it has been revoiced at one point in its life and then I loved it even more. Um, I use it for medieval, renaissance, even early baroque music, also contemporary music. I played it for a long time in my pop band. Um, if I'm improvising, I bring this recorder along with me. There is basically no situation that I wouldn't use it in. <laughs> if I had to save one of my recorders from a burning building, this would be it. 
So at this point, I just want to say, the handmade recorder world is tiny and on Team Recorder I'm so conscious about not leaving anyone out, uh, including everybody. If I've not mentioned a recorder maker on here, it's nothing personal. I really do my best um, and this is why I've actually always avoided doing videos like my favourite makers because these are real people we're talking about. Anyway, I hope that makes some kind of sense. Anyway, on to story time number two of the recorder that got away, or rather the recorder I will probably never own, and that is a Morgan. Bit of recorder history for you. Fred Morgan was an Australian recorder maker who was very active, I think in the 70s. He made extremely detailed measurements of historical instruments and used these to reconstruct Baroque recorders and his Oh my god, they're so good. He moved to Amsterdam where he would make recorders for Franz Bruchen. They had this partnership together. And the really cool thing is, last week I played a concert in Amsterdam. Afterwards I got chatting to a saxophone repair technician called Nico Bodoes and he said, oh yeah, I was friends with Fred Morgan. We shared a workshop in Amsterdam. Have you heard of him? I was like, that is what I love about the recorder. We have this long, long, long history, but the recent history is also right here and you meet the people that are making it. Anyway, I'm digressing. I I was lucky enough to go to New Zealand in March 2020. <laughs> that trip had to be cut short. Um, and I got to know the wonderful New Zealand recorder community, one of whom is a proud owner of a Morgan Alto. Uh, we met up, we played some pieces, also with a harpsichordist, and I got to try out and play on this Morgan. It's the only time in my life that I have played on a Morgan and I can, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Every so often a Morgan recorder is sold or auctioned, now they just go for ridiculous amounts of money and I think a lot of them are collected and not played, which makes me very sad. If you own a Morgan recorder, please ensure that it can be heard in concert from time to time. And for my third and final favourite of my own recorder collection, it's a very, very special one. This is my Eagle Recorder by Adriana Brokink. Now, as we know, Adriana passed away unexpectedly and far too early. It cannot be overstated what she meant for the recorder community for, with her vision and creativity in developing the instrument and making innovations, uh, as well as being such a warm and wonderful person. I guess it's a couple of years ago, I went to Enschede to her workshop where she told me all about her Eagle recorders and the philosophy behind them, so go and check it out. And she had also made this instrument for me. Adri developed her recorders for the person. She would look at how you breathed, how you inhaled, exhaled, how you stood, how you put your recorders on the instrument and she adapted every little bit of that from the windway to the size and shape of the holes specifically for how I played and as soon as I blew into this recorder it felt like the Eagle Recorder is designed to blend with modern instruments. It's much wider, giving it a broader sound. It has a metal labium, which enables you to do more dynamics. And it has extra keys, which extend the range. So this is a very special recorder from a very special person. So this was a little episode of story time. My three favourite recorders of today, my 415 Alto by Joachim Roma, my Ganassi Soprano by Stefan Bletzinger, and my very special Eagle Alto by Adriana Brokink. 
Though, of course, I love all my recorders. A lot. <laughs> Have you ever played or heard an instrument that just made your heart explode, shoot to the stars and rain back down in stardust? Let me know about it in the comments. <laughs> Let's wrap it up there, shall we? As always, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face down here in the corner. If you'd like to order a cool recorder sweatshirt available in a range of colours, here's my web shop and here's some more videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!